Welcome to the Forking Healthy podcast, a place where two sisters have cheeky chats about everything natural health and wellness. I'm your host, Jenny Soder. I am also your host, Cheryl Berecki. Together, we hope to inspire, entertain, and motivate you with our knowledge and decades of experience in the natural health and fitness industry. So if you're ready, let's get Forkin' Healthy. It's no secret that the cost of healthcare has risen substantially over the past few years. From supply chain issues to reduced production and priority shifts within our households. There's no doubt about it. It can be tough. But in this week's episode, Cheryl and I share tips on how to spend your money wisely and how expensive it is to purchase health products based on product marketing or strangers' suggestions rather than hiring a professional to provide calculated recommendations. So get your pen and paper ready for this one. You're going to want to take down some notes. Let's do this. Okay, I am so ready to give you these fast forking five questions. Are you ready, Cheryl? I'm stretching. I'm ready. What is the average food bill for you each month? $1,200. And how many people in your household? That only includes myself and a child. (laughs) People are going to turn this off and go, are they crazy? (laughs) We lost them already. Question one, we lost them. Okay, maybe I can cut it down to just below a thousand sometimes. I feel better about mine now. So, (laughs) What do you splurge on because you consider it a necessity? Oh my God, coffee. (laughs) Freak, seriously. One, what is one thing that you don't spend money on anymore? Alcohol. What do you feel has increased the most cost-wise? Whole whole food, specifically vegetables. And how much do you earn when you are sick and in bed? Zero. $0. Zero dollars. The answer is zero. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready for yours? I am. All right. What is the, we have some overlap. <laughs> what is the single largest expense line for your household monthly? That would be supplements and I get them at wholesale rates. <laughs> <laughs> what is one non-negotiable health expense for you? Um, organic free range meat. Good one. Good one. If there was a flood, what are the top three non-living things that you would take with you? Um, my socks, the sock monkey, (laughs) my Unda homeopathics (laughs) and my essential oils. I knew, see everybody out there versus you would have thought, why is she asking that question? It has nothing to do with health whatsoever. She's going to pick like her pillow. I knew that my sister would pick at least one health aspect. Um, I just want to put in there just one second. I would not, I would take my squirrel, but I wouldn't have to gather her because she would. And it's non-living. I knew you said would say squirrel, so I put (laughs) in there non-living. Okay. (laughs) Just to be clear. If you could supply one healthy thing to the whole world, every human being in this world right now, what would it be? Ooh, that's good. I think I it would have to be vitamin D. Good one. What's the biggest barrier to your clients' health care right now? Themselves, their mindset. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And their belief system, really. Yeah. And that really like guides us into when you first started like shifting, living more naturally, like how did you, what, like, first of all, when was that? Like, what did you spend money on? Like, how did you do that? How did you even (laughs) comprehend that shift? Oh boy. Honestly. Uh, You know, if I looked back to when I was living on my own off of a Bay card, a Hudson Bay card, (laughs) because I was so dead, so much dead. Um, 
if I were to look forward on how I distribute my money now, it's drastically different. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that I guess the biggest thing, the most recent thing was about eight, nine years ago. Oh, time flies by, seriously. Right. Maybe nine, 10 years ago, when I first moved to Ontario, I um, started using doTERRA essential oils and I started um, teaching and educating people about them. And the money that I made off of that, I did that so that we could afford more organic food mm -hmm. so that we could start shifting from more conventional foods into organic because there was a, a price difference. And so that's how I started shifting um, the money aspect to it. What about you? It makes me think about this um, statement that we're we talk about talk or use in our house with my son and I. And instead of saying I can't afford, we say, how can we afford? Mm -hmm. And we change that. And and I mean that's getting into a financial podcast, but um it just it's that mindset shift. And I think that that was um really a progressive thing for me. I can't, I can't see this light or this exact year when I first started to shift more naturally, because like I talk about my journey all the time, it was, it's been this 20 year process that has just naturally evolved. And so when I was overweight and I was smoking and I was drinking like a fish at 18, I let, let go of those habits and I replaced them with um, healthy habits that also cost money. And so I freed up all this money because I no longer drank, I no longer smoked, and I no longer was eating copious amounts of terrible packaged foods. And instead, I started, for me, I started to be active. That was the a first catalyst for me. And so I started being active in the outdoors and that was very affordable. And so um, that's really, a, it was just a slow progression from there when it comes to, you know, it's a lot of people are like, oh, how do I shift my products and how do I shift? But those shifts should take time. It's not an overnight thing or yeah, it will be super expensive. For me, it was a journey of learning and that mindset shift. Um, for me, most recently, the last, I would say five years, much of it has been a homemade focus for me. So I've shifted a lot of my health and my food to controlling the products that come into my life to making them myself. And that's a lot of that is food for sure. You know, making my own kombucha, making my own bread, making my own sauerkraut, making uh, my own milks, making, and yes, that takes time. Um, but also, um, I, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. And even as much as making my own laundry detergent and cleaning products and, um, those sort of things, those shifts, I, I've made those shifts over time. Those were the, those are probably some of my most recent shifts for sure. Yeah. And I think it's, that's so important for, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, we're going to learn how to live more naturally. <laughs> like we have a, you know, in our January, 2022, you know, natural living mentorship that's coming in. It's not about, okay, we're going to clean out your entire kitchen yeah. and replace every single ingredient totally. in your entire house. I mean, that would be extremely expensive and, and wasteful and wasteful. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's about slowly shifting, just like you said. And so, um, yeah, you, you just, all you do is you distribute your money differently at yeah. one thing at a time. Right oh, I'm not drinking as much. That money that's there now, I can do X, Y, and Z with. Or like you say, because that has been big for me as well. Um, can I do a little side hustle where I can make a little bit of extra money? And that specifically is going to go towards my health care. Yeah. And, and so let me talk to us a little bit about the cost of is you talk about this a lot. And I had a personal experience with this just this last couple of months, the cost of repairing and treating versus the cost of supporting and preventing. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, yes. T taking a natural approach to health uh, approach to healthcare is different. It, it will require shifting. Um, it's not like most people have coverages for pharmaceuticals. 
um, supplements are not the same thing. Right. And so some of the things that I think that, um, specifically within my practice are big is that a lot of times when people leave huge gaps in their appointments, they say, Oh, well, I'm feeling really, really good. I'm not going to see until instead of the, you know, recommended 12 weeks, I'm going to stretch that to like six months and, or wait until they feel unwell. And then what happens is they regress and they're spending more on supplements and more time and more follow-ups rather than keeping on a pro progressive, like slowly spacing out those appointments. So we get you into this maintenance phase. Um, delaying until you get a diagnosis, like that it's the worst thing you can do. Oh, well, I'm fine now. You know, my blood sugar is a little bit off. Maybe I'm borderline diabetic, but I'm just going to wait until I'm diabetic. So I'm going to see someone on how to adjust yeah. this lifestyle so that I don't, you know, so that I don't have to take medication now. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the beauty of the bioscans that I do is that we see when things are slipping to an unhealthy state before they get to like a blood test confirming that it's there. That's yeah. one of the Huge. services, right? And so a lot of the services that we have coming up, the personalized health coaching and the mentorship is about um, learning about the foundations so that you don't ever have to come and see me to fix something. Mm -hmm. what about you what what do you see what kind of things well for me everything is about supporting and preventing because ideally I can get clients to a place where they don't need me mm -hmm. and they are um, learning to do those things on their own they're learning to become body aware and to look at their biofeedback enough that they can be responding to their body based on what it's telling them. I think mm -hmm. it's beautiful if we learn to tap in and listen to our body, but you're right. Most people that come in are in such disarray body wise because they haven't been listening to their body for so long, or they've been ignoring and band-aiding their body. Yeah. And there's a real big difference there. And, and that will look different for everyone. I, I mean, as a single mom, I can feel for this topic. Like there's been a massive shift alone for me in how do I make it work and what can I cut and what can I shift and what do I need to pull back on now? And that might not always be the case, but I understand here there is a huge privilege piece, but there is always base foundational pieces that people can be doing that can help support and prevent. And a big piece for me is obviously tied in with food and movement and lifestyle and taking care of yourself from a preventative piece. Um, the biggest one I've seen this year is alone is like stress management in, and, and that piece of the puzzle. Um, and I have a, a specific experience um, this past year where, for example, you know, my preventative piece is say a hundred dollars a month that I spend um, on supplements. And, and that's probably, it's probably a little more than that, but let's say my baseline, I can get away with a hundred dollars a month in supplements. And then I got sick, um, in, uh, I got a, a serious staph infection in, um, uh, September. And a lot of people will say, well, we, you know, most of us live in Canada and we were lucky enough to have healthcare. So you didn't have to pay for any, you know, some of those drugs and all of those things, <laughs> but I'm self-employed. I'm a single mom. It took away from um, work time for me. It I easily spent three times the amount of money in foods and supplements and repairs. And that doesn't include the time that it put me flat on my back. And it didn't allow me to do the things lifestyle that I wanted to do. I'm still repairing from that. So three times the amount that I normally spend in preventative and supporting I ended up having to pay in repairing and treating. Yeah. And it was a real like um, good experience for me because generally speaking, I've spent the last, you know, five to 10 years on prevention and supporting. And so um, to have to get to the place again, um, where it's all about treating and repairing, I'm reminded uh, the importance. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and what about um, like spending on, like materials and like guessing what you 
guessing what you need. Like um, a lot, I find, I don't know about you, but I find a lot of people do this guesswork of like grabbing, I need this, or I, I, I read this news article. So I think I need to add in, um, you know, this supplement, or I should be eating these foods and uh, I need to add in this into my life. Like that guesswork can be really expensive. And you see that a lot. Yeah, it can be. Um, I, I want to, I did some, I did some math. I'm pretty proud of this. I need wow. to show this. Yeah, I know math is not my forte, but I did, um, I did some calculations. So when I was personal training, um, my last group of clients about seven years ago, um, at, I had a client that I worked with four times a week at 5 a.m. And on the way back um, from doing that, I was starving. And so I'd stop at Tim Hortons and I'd get an egg and cheese bagel. Okay. I saw you just curl your lip there in disgust. Um, and was it lathered with cheese whiz? No, no. <laughs> well, the cheese was debatable whether that was cheese whiz or not. And it was $4. So $4 four times a week comes to $16 a week, $16 a week times four weeks is $64 a month. And it comes out to $768 a year for one bagel at Tim Hortons. Right. Mind blown. Now you go to, you go to Starbucks, it's at least double, yeah. right? But people are like, $80 for a bottle of probiotics. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. it lasts you two months. So, so I did some, I did some math. I said, if I go to premium stores and I buy a gluten-free bagel, organic cheese, free range eggs, and I make my own and I add that probiotic it's exactly the same damn price. Wow. As that Tim Hortons. Yeah. And now you have an organic gluten-free, a free range, the best you can get maybe yeah. takes you five minutes, the same amount of time that it took me to go off of the way to sit in line, to wait for it and to right get there. it. Yeah. And, and I have a probiotic to keep me healthy for two months. Yeah. It's the same price. We don't stop to break it down and take yeah. a look at the raising costs of healthcare, but what are we spending on staying sick? Yeah. What yeah. are we spending there? So, you know, as we're, yes, I'll go back to that. So when people are taking a look at and trying to guess of what they need, you know, the groups on Facebook, they just, I stay in them for like seconds. I cannot <laughs> handle it because people, you know, rightfully so people have a community and they want advice. Yeah. So they're like, what do you take for this? Yes. And I'm like, they don't know you. They don't know you. Yeah. So you're going to buy the marketing or someone else's experience when that person is not you, you are yeah. wasting money on supplements, right? Yeah rather than allotting that to hire a coach like yourself or myself or any other people out there when they can specifically get to know you and we have years and decades of experience customizing things so it's not just a crapshoot or a you know a, a shot in the dark kind of like yeah. a diet right oh yeah. this diet works but does it work for you let's try it you just wasted all your time your energy your mental capacity and now you're nowhere further ahead yeah right yeah totally i i do think as well you know you touched on the privilege and i think it's it is you know this is this is super important to note is that you just do the you do the best you can in the season you're in yep right yeah totally so and when there's you, always things you can do, like, like think of like the whole maid piece, you know, yeah. like I, I can, I can, I guide some, you know, of my single parent clients and um, you know, I have clients that from all walks of life and they're like stay at home moms and they have tight budgets, you know, yeah. but they, they've said to me, you know, do you know how much I've spent on fad diets and gym member unused gym memberships and um kirkland supplements over the over uh. the years where um instead i can really spend you know a, a small amount of time a uh, pinpointing what is the best bang for buck that works specifically for me yeah because i think that that is the facade out there 
a lot in in this healthcare field is that there's one size fits all approach and we can just grab that and we can apply it to ourselves and we wonder why it doesn't work. And then we feel like a failure and we beat ourselves up. And then, you know, a few months later, we try, we spend our big earn, hard earned money on something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, you know, I have such deep respect for the clients that really, really put themselves out there and put their health, make their health a priority. I have single moms who use food stamps and they still see me, right? And yeah. we work with it and, you know, they do the best that they can in the season that they're in and they always spend inside their safety zone, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's when you, when you buy outside, oh, I can't really afford this, but then they go and they buy, go to home sense. <laughs> yeah. like, and again, that, I think the shift in mindset is just such a huge part of this because yes. it's like switching the language that you're using, as opposed to saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's no different than clients saying, I, I can't do that, or I can't give up that. It's like, let's talk about what you can do. Let's focus on what you can do versus what you can't do and what you can afford or how can we help you afford that from a payment plan to uh, spacing out appointments to um, focusing on rice and beans versus, you know, high quality grass fed meats. Like let's, yeah. what can we do? Because there's always things that you can do. So let's go through food supplements, practitioners and activities. A tip for each of them on how people can cut costs um, or distribute that financial piece so that they can get a lot of value in there. So yeah. food, food wise, what do you suggest? For me, it's homemade. For me, it's like switching to what can you make at, uh, at home um, versus buying those packaged foods. And that, that's been a huge switch for me. What about you? For me, it's about eating foods that are in season. Like I, I don't yeah, care yeah. if you're craving watermelon in the middle of the <laughs> buying a eight ninety nine watermelon is just irresponsible. If you're looking at it big scope, it may not seem like a lot, but you know, take a look fresh to frozen, you know, organic. Yeah. Yes. But you know, organic frozen from Costco berries are very cost effective. Yeah. Totally. And but, what about supplements for you? God, but this would be really hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't buy what you think you need. Buy what you have been tested and you know will need. What the expert tells you you should use. Yeah. Customized for sure. You, you supplement. Um, pre prevention, like keeping that um, foundation. I think what I see a lot of clients do is they they forget about their foundations and they don't take their foundations consistently. So customization is really key, but I think there's some key foundations there as well and the consistency of those. So I see people that like then stop taking their foundational supplements for like six months and then, and then they're in, we're dealing with sick care, not health care. We're yeah. not in the prevention scheme of things. And so then, yeah, you're going to spend twice as much. So how about we spread things out and keep it consistent from a foundational piece. And then we won't be playing catch up down the road. hundred percent, hundred percent. What about practitioners and like working with a coach? What kind of things can you do? Well, like for me, I have multi-tiered levels for this very reason. Like I have things as simple as my movie play cards that cost, you know, less than $20 that a family can use and then, you know, 30 bucks a month to be a member and then, and then move from there. I think people get really turned off by thinking they have to do one-to-one -one top tier programming with a practitioner um, or someone to support them. But what are some of the, you know, smaller foundational pieces that you can uh, take advantage of? Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you? You know what, for me, um, my tip would be take a look at the mini courses that practitioners run off of the major ones. And so often um, business owners like you and I will run smaller courses that lead into larger ones. And yes. within that course, you're often going to get payment plans or discount codes. And when you're doing a 
or becoming a part of a program, when you're taking a look at the value, one of the things that I really learned, and I, and I spent a lot of money on a coaching program before, but I knew that I would always use that information forever. And so it was a long-term life investment because I would always go back to it. So don't just take a look at it. Oh, it's 12 weeks. If it's 12 weeks or, you know, three months or what have you, you're going to carry that on. Look at the content rather than, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. What about activities for you? Um, I couldn't pick just one for this. So for me, <laughs> it was walking or workouts at home. The, yeah. you, you, what do you need to walk? You, you likely have shoes already. Yeah. I would, uh, you know, and if you don't, then, you know, let's, let's uh, go to the thrift store, like a, a pair of runners, like that walking is, we just forget about that base foundation. And when you create a foundational habit, like walking and steps, then you can move from there. I think we often think about workouts and we need all this equipment. I have people that use freaking freaking lot laundry jugs mm -hmm. at home doing home workouts. Like what is the cost in that? You're likely already doing laundry. And so you have laundry detergent and what else do you need? I agree. Love what that. about you? Um, for me, it's connect with others. So, you know, there's, nice. um, there's tons of different programs you can do, have accountability with people or go in as a group where you can approach and get, you know, smaller discounts if you're interested in something like a program. Yeah. Good one. Good one. I think people often think it's just like just one-to-one, -one, you know? Yeah, for sure. Those sort of things. I, I want to end by just reminding people of something I tell my clients in line with this, that something is always better than nothing. And I often find that people are like, I can't afford um, the, the be all end all. I can't afford a gym, a fancy gym membership and a coach and a nutrition plan and this, you know, X, Y, Z, but something is always better than nothing. And there is lots of somethings out there that are at all different price ranges. You can always be doing something and progressively work on that. Amen, sister. A bloody man. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Thank you for tuning in to the Forking Healthy podcast. If you want to stay up to date on future podcasts, make sure you follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In order for us to get into more ear holes, we would love for you to take a moment to share this episode or leave us a review. That's it for now. Fork and rights. Ha <laughs> ha.